Hello everybody, I'm doing another request video. This is a request from Ed A to Z. He's one of my subscribers and he's the chap who very generously sent me those two lovely book knives. Ed's over there in the States and he's asking me to do a video talking about what the situation's like in Britain for buying and collecting knives what's available and how easy is it because he's aware that it's different over here than it is in America um, and he'd just like me to give a bit of detail on uh, on the day-to-day -day reality so I think the first thing we need to do um, is look at the kinds of things that you're not allowed. There's very specific legislation prohibiting buying, selling, importing, owning a few different types of knives. So we'll just have a look at those now. Bally songs. We can't have ballet songs due to a massive government panic in the 80s triggered by Kung Fu films. A lot of martial arts weapons got banned. Push daggers. Can't have push daggers. Not um, considered a terribly decent thing. Not even traditional ones. Similarly, gravity knives. Even though they um, have uses as rescue knives, um, can't have a gravity knife. Not allowed. Disguised knives are just not British, so they're banned. Belt buckle knives are quite popular, I believe, but not allowed. And the sword stick or the sword cane, forbidden. Now, having said that, um, there's plenty that is available and that we are allowed to have if you know where to look. Part of the problem is that not having a culture of knife carrying. Knife shops are not really very common. Um, kitchen knife shops are. Anywhere from supermarkets to specialist cook shops to little tiny hardware shops will probably have um, a few kitchen knives. But in terms of anything interesting, it's a bit limiting. So if you look at the problem of actually getting to a decent sized knife outlet, um, it's not that easy in the UK. I'm roughly there, where that orange pointer is. And one of the main ones that everybody will know, or all the UK knife nuts will know, is Heine Haynes. They have a great website, but if you want to visit them in person, they're down here. Which is about 200 miles away. Um, another big one is the Bushcraft store. But again, they're also 200 miles away. They're roughly... There. Um, there is a, a big army surplus website called um, surplusstore.co.uk but they're 240 miles away. They're somewhere down there. <laughs> One of the, the better known ones in the north of England um, and a lot of people like this place, is Blades and Bows. But even they are um, nearly 70 miles away. They're round about there. And that does seem a lot closer, 70 miles away, but it's still a good two hours from where I am. Um, so unless you happen to live somewhere close to one of these places you are pretty much um, stuck with 
buying over the internet. Now, those are a few of the main options for sourcing knives for using and knives for collecting. I haven't included Amazon.co.uk because it's pretty poor. Um, they do have a few pocket knives and they do have a reasonable selection of Victorinox Swiss Army knives. And that's about it really. Um, they did used to sell cookeries from Cookery House and as you might imagine I dithered about should I buy one should I not by the time I decided I was definitely going to buy one they stopped selling them there's no reason given they just disappeared I'm assuming it's because they don't want to fall foul of the rules on curved swords and of course there's a a big debate you could have as to whether cookeries are curved swords or not. But anyway, so there's no point bothering with Amazon over here really. Um, and if you can find a decent outlet, then it's not too bad. So, having looked at what we're not allowed to have, and how difficult it is to physically get somewhere and buy knives in person there is still a lot you can do and there's still a lot of interesting stuff available um, from things like Mora's lots of places will have Mora's um, all different types to slightly more interesting Scandi knives such as the um, Carisoando. This I bought from a very good um, online outlet called Castrum. I think it's castrum.co.uk. I'll put a link in the box if you like Scandinavian knives and you're in the UK I think you really need to look at them. Um, you can get big daft knives for example, uh, 8 inch Bowie. It's not a top quality one, that, but the price was good and it's a big slab of steel. You can get um, tactical style knives. More regular hunting knives. There's the book you sent me, Ed. One of the things for buying American brands. If you're over here is they are quite expensive compared to what you would pay if you're in the States so for example as a rough rule of thumb whatever you would pay in dollars we pay in pounds sterlings sterlings in pounds sterling so it does inflate the price quite a bit but there's still plenty out there. There's traditional knives, case pocket knives. Amazon have a handful of these. Also, you might see case knives in if you get little independent tobacconists. They tend to have two sort of tie-ins. Zippo lighters and case pocket knives. So if you see a little traditional tobacconist with a rack of pipes in the window, it's worth having a look, see if they've got any interesting case knives. Swiss Army knives are easy to come by. I've got quite a few of those. Um, for European knives, there's not a great advantage in buying from European retailers it's quite often just as easy and cheaper to go to the manufacturers especially for custom knives so this Lagnol from Fontenille Pateau 
bought direct from the makers. La Navette by Renault Aubry bought through the website from the maker. I can't praise this company highly enough for £65. I don't know what's that, £105, $110. You've got a traditional style bone handled pocket knife made start to finish by one man. That's a lovely, lovely thing. Just going to move these round, ooh, move these round a bit to see if I can make a little bit more room. Because the the one thing I do want to talk about as well is in the UK, in England particularly, we have got a very lively and growing custom knife scene. Um, there's a lot of UK knife makers who within the first 12 months of setting up are making amazing knives and the prices for handmade knives are really quite good. So you might get things like a uh, shiv from Dell at Dirty Room Knives if you like something a bit modern. Um, Adrian at Chiro's Knives, who's not, as far as I'm aware, he's not selling knives yet, but when you see the standard of his work, it really is amazing. Uh, who else have we got to hand? Um, Andy from Doberman Knives. This is quite an early knife from Andy and it was a it was a blank a, Dam a Damascus blank that he's worked up with a handle um, it's quite a bit different from his style now his style is really big and chunky and downright scary quite often but the standard that he's chucking out is amazing as well so there's certainly a good range of blades available in the UK. If you're careful where you look and what you pick, it's alright really. Considering we're not really allowed to carry anything, except a little pocket knife perhaps, but we are allowed to own some proper big daft choppers. So there you go. I think there's certainly enough interesting knives out there to keep me collecting for a while and hopefully um, it's going to get easier rather than more difficult. So that's my little overview of knife buying in the UK. Hope you found that interesting Ed and uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>